Komodo dragon, that, that's about as close as I want to get. She, she, I'm like, I, okay, that's too scary. That, a little, <laughs> that's a little intense. Second pumpkin spice of the season, delicious. Hey there everyone, we are back at Disney's Animal Kingdom and today we are going on an exploration. Now a few days ago I mentioned that I wanted to find more of those small animal viewing areas, the trails as well, but I want to find those areas that are kind of off the beaten track a little bit to see those animals. Today's the day to do it. Delicious pumpkin spice, thanks to Shelly. Shelly, thank you again. Now today I am wearing my Figment Magic Band slap bracelet right there. It looks phenomenal. I love it. Great to see it. Really, really is. One note, it has already popped off once when I took my backpack off, slid right past my wrist and popped right off. Other than that though, I think it looks great. I really do like it when I'm not wearing a backpack is what I'm gonna wear, but I, I do like standard Magic Bands too. Do not regret the purchase, still love it. Now when I took that backpack off, it did slip off, as you can see right there, but other than that, it's actually pretty comfortable to wear. You can actually see this little, little bubble. See that little bubble right there underneath where it kinda doesn't click right in there? It's because it's made for different wrist sizes, right? So if I slide it down just a little bit, it's a little bit better right there, but you can, it comes off really easily. So great for when you're not wearing a backpack, the slap band magic bands. I'm gonna keep testing it over the next few weeks or so, sometimes with a backpack, sometimes without. See if it pops off any more times. But here, I'm gonna show you how it happened, right? I was, I was in Starbucks, I was taking off my backpack. I always take it off over my right shoulder. Taking it off is not a problem. Putting it back on, you see how I like slide like this? Yeah, see, that's exactly how it happened. And then there it goes, falls right off. So that's important, right? So if you're wearing a backpack, that's just one thing to consider. Love the design though. Love the design, not taking away from that. I love the fact that you can do this. Not taking away from that either. Just with backpack, something to think about. I'm seeing Mickey, Minnie, and Pluto over there. Oh, there, there. I love it, you see him out there. Uh, yeah, that's so cool to see him over there. I, I love seeing him on the water. I really, really do. Now we're gonna start our grand tour of these little animal viewing areas with the giant Galapagos tortoise here. The reason we're starting it here is because last time we were here, they are the ones who inspired me to make this video. You guys did. Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and take a closer look. You can see they've got that very large shell, large head peeking out there, looking at us, looking for some maybe celery, because I believe that is indeed what they eat, the gr leafy greens, and uh, walking around. Some of them are sunbathing. Oh, there he goes back in there. Some of them are sunbathing. Others are sleeping on the other uh, side of the enclosure over there. Now these giant Galapagos tortoises here are a tiny bit on the smaller side, but some of them can have turtle shells that grow up to five feet long. In addition, some of them can weigh up to 600 pounds. Can you imagine? Looks like he's uh, possibly going for some water right there. Oh, he's checking out that uh, leaf. Looks like it fell from one of the palm trees above. Check out this tortoise right here. He's eating some of those, uh, I'm not sure, maybe it's straw that they left out for them there. Oh, he's gonna chomp on it. There he goes. Um, yum. Now I've learned that many of these Galapagos tortoises live over 100 years in the wild and over 170 years in captivity. Wow. Like the story Tortoise and the Hare, he does move rather slowly, but it's definitely slowly and surely. He knows where he's going. He's going for maybe a leafy green over there. Looks like they ate recently though. You can see a lot of straw uh, scattered over here. There's actually some trays in there too. See the tray? Where they uh, probably just ate some food. Here's a much closer look at that tortoise. You see him walking along there, his legs one in front of the other. Almost looks like scales on his legs there. See that? My gosh, that's so cool. He's got a little tail in the back along with the uh, hind legs which are being used to push him along. You can see some long uh, nails on there too to help him get that grip that he needs. Now you can see these tortoises near the Tree of Life. They're located in there, kind of in that way. You can also see them by that fence over there. We're walking away from the Tree of Life at the moment. We're gonna see what's in this enclosure. Oh, they're out foraging. They'll be back soon. Okay, I thought we saw like a, maybe a porcupine in here in the past. Not here at the moment. They'll be back, I'm sure. But this is another area to see those animals. Uh-oh, we're at another one, also out foraging. Maybe some of the animals have kind of gone away during this time to keep them safe. Not 100% sure. Actually, I'm going to ask a cast member. This could also be a great day to kind of do, do more of this, more of looking around to find the animals, but also walk down some of those animal trails. Just spoke to a very kind cast member and learned that the, uh, the crane or stork, who was kind of up front we saw, is sometimes there. He has actually been away for a couple of months now, maybe getting some uh, medical treatment. Who knows? T tough to tell right now. We'll check on him later. 
Um, and the porcupine apparently has only been gone for a couple of days. So he's probably just taking a little vacay and then he'll come back <laughs> for some more fun. So we're gonna go in this direction. He recommended we go this way. We're gonna see if we can find some more animals kind of along the pathways here. And then we'll go for those trails and possibly the safari too. That's always fun. Love looking at animals from there too, but trails and other animals are the priority. I'm by the lemur viewing area here by the tree of life. Super great spot here. Looking for him. I don't see him at the moment. I'm gonna keep walking around a little bit, see if I can't find him. But uh, they can go on and off stage anytime they want, which is great. Great. It's great to know. We might go the other way, see some of the apes, and then loop back for them. I don't see them quite yet, but you can see some of those vines up above that they probably love to swing from. You can see little areas for them to get water as well as a little water dispenser right there. Some food dispensers below other areas for food and fruit, areas for them to uh, sit back and relax. We'll find them. We will at some point. Maybe it won't even be today. We don't know. But we got time to find them in the future, too. Still no sign of those lemurs. You can see the sign for them, though. The ring-tailed lemur there. We'll uh, we'll find them in the future. I have no doubt. Even though the lemurs are on a little bit of a break right now, way back there, you can find another uh, long bird. Kind of a stork bird back there. Cleaning himself. Looks like he's standing on one leg. Can't really tell from here. But uh, he's back there. Let's go find out more about him. Looks like there's a large vulture. Oh, he's looking right at us. Oh, I see you. Hi. Hi. He's, he's back there. There's another vulture sitting out there, kind of on that down tree there. Looks like a smaller version of the larger one we saw a moment ago. But uh, cool section here. Take a look. Here's another one of those vultures. His mouth looks a little open there. Looks like he's ready for food. Maybe. I think so. Looks like they've been fed recently, though. I can see... Uh, some food buckets near them. Now we'll get back to some of those vultures in a moment, but take a look, we found the Perun shark catfish. Oh my, shark catfish? <laughs> oh, that sounds scary. I don't know if you can see him back there, but that is a very large fish. I don't know if I want to be in the water with that animal. Take a look at that shark catfish there. I would not want to be in the water with that animal. That is so large. <laughs> So large. Shark catfish here can actually navigate in very, very low light, low visibility just with those whiskers. And they live, it looks like, off the coast of uh, maybe in the South China Sea. Looks like he lives. See the little red dot right there. Now, not India, a little bit further out. Looks like South China Sea. I'm going to play its theme song. You ready? Da 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 da. Da, 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 da. Next up, let's go check out some of those otters. You can see a lot of guests are over there to take a closer look. We're gonna go to this uh, downstairs area. Now we're headed into the Otter Grotto, supported by Otterbox. That's, that's so funny. That's so funny. Look at otters at home there. You can see a lot of uh, creatures there. Looks like a frog, some small crabs, clams. They eat a lot of great seafood, seafood diet for them. Now the Otter Grotto is actually pretty extensive. It goes in that direction, but we're gonna start by looking through this glass here. I don't see them out and about. Might be a little warm for them today. Just a little bit. We'll have more time to come back and take another look. But take a look at their area right there. They can sit back, relax, eat some food, chill on the sand. Looks great. Going deeper into the otter grotto now, hoping to see some otters. I see some fish down there along with some, looks like that seaweed or sea grass there. You look above the water and I don't see them out there. Maybe they're backstage hanging out a little bit. Not 100% sure. We'll, uh, We'll see if we can track them down though. I want to see some otter. Look at the size of the otter paw. You can actually see my hand in comparison. I'm not touching it, but you can see a really small paw there and they use it to eating fish or uh, cracking open uh, clams, whatever it is. Now on these signs, I'm seeing a lot of these what you can do to help. And uh, this one's repeated a few times, making sure that all the fish that you get, whether it's eating at a restaurant or maybe cooking at home, is from those uh, fishermen or those who are kind of uh, fish farming who are responsible. That's the most important part to help out the otters and many of the other animals. Now I don't see any down here. Let's go back up these stairs, see if we can't find them by the other viewing area. I see him. He was being a little sneaky over there. But can you see him right in there? Ah, we found one, that's great. Now it looks like that otter might be just kind of hanging out, staying cool from the heat. Perhaps he's gonna go fishing in a moment. Up oh, there he goes, he's going back the other way now. We saw him. I just saw a ripple in the water, which means that he is definitely in there. If he doesn't pop up in a few minutes here, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, head back down there so we can get a look at him underwater. All right, it's catfish feeding time, so they're throwing in some uh, fruits and veggies. Oh my gosh, he came over real fast. We're gonna watch a little bit of feeding time here. That's a super, super quick movement by that uh, catfish. Every time he hears another movement, um. 
found out that the shark catfish's name is Bruce. Great name for a catfish. I also hear the macaws coming in, so we're gonna try and catch them before they fly away. We'll see if we can catch them. They're usually pretty quick. I think they actually may have already flown away. I'm seeing the crowds break up a little bit. Let's find out. Almost all of them flew away at this point, except for one who's hanging out for a photo. Check out that macaw right up there, finishing off some of the snacks. He's gonna head home in just a minute here, but it's great to see him. It's called, I think it's called Flights of Wonder. I believe so, or Winged Encounters, excuse me. Winged Encounters here. You can actually see them all fly in and catch it in super slow-mo as they all leave. You can learn a lot from our Winged Encounter cast member friends here. Look at all the colors on this macaw. I absolutely love seeing them. They, they come in all sorts of colors though. It's great to see some blue ones, green ones, purple ones. I love it, absolutely love them. He's just hanging out. He can go home anytime. He's a free roaming bird there. Wow, he's gonna fly away any moment. He's just thinking about it, but he can hang out for as long as he likes, just enjoying the view of us. <laughs> like We're watching him, he's watching us, I can tell. Oh, here we go. The vacuum down there is being used to clean up some of the extra bird seed so that uh, he's not tempted to fly down there. He could hurt himself, we don't want him to hurt himself. See the cast member is vacuuming up, and he's gonna, up. Oh, there he goes. I absolutely love winged encounters. Highly recommend it, highly, highly recommend it. Now, while we're up front, let's take a look at the white stork here. The white stork lives throughout a lot of Europe and some of Africa as well. They do a lot of migrating, you can actually see there, and they eat a lot of different things, lots of different things. But you can see your, the best way to help them out is to turn your backyard into a bird-friendly habitat. There he is right over there, and he's got, an, he's got his brother or friend hanging out right over here, flapping his wings, kind of poking around, looking for maybe fish or some small invertebrates that he can eat. That's what they enjoy. They just use their really sensitive beaks there to poke around, try and find some delicious food. Cleaning their wings, hanging out. Great to see them. They're right here in front of the Tree of Life. Or I can see two. Probably are two. I would imagine probably only two. Not sure. But uh, awesome to see him. By the way, you can ignore that small white bird on the right of our white stork there because I believe that's a native Florida bird. You'll find a lot of the native Florida birds are hanging out in the enclosure from time to time. Sometimes they can pick up some of that extra food that's uh, put out there for the uh, animals, sometimes. But uh, they do like to hang out with them. They're brother and sister birds there. Now, you remember the vulture that we found earlier? It's actually the lappet faced vulture. I believe that's how you pronounce it. You can find him in Africa. And sure enough, he does eat some of those animals that are no longer around. Very important job. Very important job in any ecosystem to make sure it stays clean and safe for the other animals. In addition, there's a red kangaroo. I have not seen it yet. I will be on the lookout for the red kangaroo, native to Australia. They're mostly active at dusk and dawn. So maybe Maybe you won't see him today, but I definitely want to come back and see those red kangaroos. Here's that lapid faced vulture again. Apparently they just did a little bit of training so they know uh, where to go to get fed in the future. We can see him kind of chowing down on a meatball or something else there to make sure that he is uh, nice and full and uh, has an important job, as we know, in the ecosystem. Oh, you can see more of those vultures flying around. In front of the vultures here, you can find some native Florida birds. <laughs> we knew it, but if we turn to our right here, those are flamingos. I believe they are pink-backed flamingos. We can see some amazing flamingos on Kilimanjaro safaris, but take a look at the color and definition. I love the black and orange beak. Oh, he's hiding it. That's okay, we saw it for a moment. Now, where is that food? Where is that food? You can tell, oh my gosh, I love the coloring. I love it. It's just, it's that bright pink. And then his, uh, his beak with the orange and the black just goes so well together. So just found out these are actually called the lesser flamingo. We're learning as we go here. I love it. One of the smallest uh, breeds or, or uh, species, excuse me, species of flamingos that you can find, they come from Africa. So I'm learning a lot from our cast member friends. I love them seeing them walking around. That's so cool. So just found out that these flamingos are indeed different from the ones that you can find on Kilimanjaro. One on Kilimanjaro are called greater flamingos. They can grow to five feet tall. The ones uh, here are called lesser flamingos. They go to about three feet tall. You can find them right by the Otter Encounter cast members. Super smart. They, they have all the facts ready for you. I love learning about it. We're gonna go back to the otters real quick. See if we can catch them maybe fishing or hanging out in the water. Oh my gosh, look, they're super active. I know you're out there, otters. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Just saw him inside. Oh, there he is. Oh, you can see him. He's reading little peaks of him right in there. Oh my gosh, so cute. Oh my gosh, so cute. He's just hanging around, looking, making sure there are no predators around. Then maybe he'll uh, he'll jump out and go for some food. Oh, there he is again. You can see they're playing together right there. There's two of them. There's two of them playing. Oh my gosh, that's about the cutest animal I've seen today. They're just playing. Oh, there's three. You see all three? 
Oh, that's great. I got some shade in there too as they're wrestling. You can tell they're, uh, they're more active now because the clouds are out and about, so it's not as sunny, so they can just uh, keep themselves safe from the sun. It's amazing how the animals know that too. You know, like they don't want to be out in the direct sunlight all day. Super smart. This is a great view of them right here. You can really see them digging around there. Oh, and there's one in the water right underneath. See that? Oh my gosh, that is a great shot of those otters. Dive, dive. You can see them swimming along there. Maybe they're looking for an afternoon snack. I don't know, but I love seeing them. Yep, they're diving down right over there. I'm not sure. Oh, maybe we'll see them catch a fish. Sure enough, they're right up against the window right over there. I wonder if we can make... Oh, hey, Mr. Otter. Hey. Oh, he's, he's sneezing. He sneezed a little bit, kind of to blow the air out from his nose. I keep trying to find them under the water here. I just saw him. Oh, there we go. There's that underwater shot of the otter. There he goes. He's a fast swimmer. Oh my gosh. Now, from what I can tell, there are about four areas to see the otters from because I can tell these are a favorite. You can see the uh, window when you first walk into the exhibit area, two underwater ones, and then this bridge up here as you walk on the Tree of Life Trail. Now, there are a few more animals on the walkway back towards the main entrance that we're going to catch as we go out. But for now, what I'm going to go do is go down some of those trails. We'll see a few more animals. I believe the mandrels live in here and they are not out right now. They're still they're foraging. They're foraging around like some of the other animals like the porcupine. We'll catch them another day. The special trails are in that direction, but Rafiki's Planet Watch is another great spot that I want to explore. Last train leaves at 4.30, so let's head on it now so we have time. We'll have time after this, too, to go down some of those other trails. Now, to get to the conservation station, we have to take a train, the Wildlife Express. Now, while the Magic Kingdom steam train is down and being refurbished right now, this is the only train at Walt Disney World that you can take, except for, you know, the Mickey Minnie's Runaway Railway, technically a train, monorail, technically a train. Steam train, steam train. Frankly, it's a little bit embarrassing how long it's been since I've been on this train. Uh, it's been too long, been too long. All right, we're gonna enjoy it. Cooking forbidden on board the train. Oh, we, we brought the grill all the way out here for now then. You can see the train's a little bit unique. Instead of like the Magic Kingdom where we all face forward, we're all facing towards the side. So we're actually looking out of the side of the train. Harambe Station, leaving it behind. Take a look, you can actually see Lion King posters here. The uh, different actors who played in the movie. The area is the Warhawk building is a lion building, the food stock building. This is where all the animals rest after a long day on the safari. We're actually right behind that uh, rock structure where the lions hang. Oh my gosh, you can actually see the rhinos kind of hanging out. This is like a separate safari. They're uh, getting all muddy at the moment, protecting their skin. Back at Conservation Station. It has been a long, long time. Too long, too long. There's Rafiki welcoming us in. I have forgotten how much of a jungle the Rafiki planet watch conservation station area is. It's a jungle back here. Butterfly crossing. I don't think I've seen that sign before. And here we are back at Rafiki's Planet. Watch the entrances. Now that direction. Here's where you can see some of those animals back here. And during certain times, you can also uh, kind of you know, feed them a little bit, interact with them a little bit. Not now, not now, but yeah, that's great. This is Khaleesi, a very, very large female uh, Komodo dragon. That, that's about as close as I want to get. She, she, I'm like, I, okay, that's too scary. That, a little, <laughs> that's a little intense. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stand back here. Don't want to forget about that animation experience, which starts in about five minutes. So, see if we can sign up for it real quick. I wonder if I'd ever fly one of those. It was like, it's like a paraglider, like the. Like the propeller and the glider. Today we're making Zazu. This is going to be great. A little animation along with our animal experiences. We are going to make another curve coming up and over. So far, so good. Curve of the sails. That dimple is pushing up on the bear. Not bad. Great teacher here. Great, great time drawing Zazu. We've got to kind of try and keep him safe in the backpack. We'll walk around to a few more animals, but then we have to catch that last train back. I don't want to miss it. Whoops, never mind. Just realized that the... Uh, they're actually all closed up. Time is now 4.30. Uh, we need to get back. I don't know what happens if you miss that final train, but I, I prefer to take the train than walk. I don't, I don't know how far it is. You probably don't have to walk, but you know, there are guests behind me too, so I'm not 100% sure, but I saw the last train leaves, 4.30. Maybe that's only from uh, Harambe. Not sure, but I think we'll make it. This is where we can learn about those birds that use those little houses all around Walt Disney World's property. You gotta come back here to learn more about them. I just. I don't want to miss any trains. I love this skull on the front of the train right there. Do you see him? 
going to leave the train there right by the express. Oh, there are a lot of guests who are getting off at this time. I probably could have stayed. We probably could have stayed. I think we're fine. It was probably the last train from Harambe. That's all right. Live and learn. Next time, we'll come back to uh, Conservation Station, no doubt. We're passing by. It looks like a local village there. A lot of uh, fruits and vegetables. You know what? I think I'm going to save those other trails for another time. I want to go into great detail on those trails as well. We saw a lot today. We really, really did. More than I thought we would. And I want to go back to... Uh, Conservation Station too, and see even more of the animals back there. So there's, there's definitely more to see. And that's one of the things that I love. We can come back, we can do a part two. That's, that's my favorite. Now continuing our animal adventures, Kilimanjaro. Always a good time for Kilimanjaro. Here's that new building inside of the safari. So on Kilimanjaro Safaris, it's right there. Got a little fence with it as well. I can't wait to see what it's for. I should mention when I went to put the bag back on, the uh, magic band kind of did one of those or, yeah, a little, so you gotta kind of be aware of it. Best without a bag, that's, that's my recommendation. Slap brand, love it, convenient, super stylish. That's the best part, but without a bag, I think is best. Gorilla Falls for another day, for another day. We'll get to a part two, it's gonna be great. Recycle your phones and use natural pesticides. Those are the big tips for the day. My secret on a super hot day at Disney, cut through the uh, shopping area. I'm not sure if we've seen this one before, but take a look at the uh, mini kind of adventure bag out there. It's a lounge fly kind of green on the bottom there. And she's got her hat on, that's awesome. Look at this new lounge fly leopard print sequin bag. You see it get real close. You can see the leopard print in the sequence. That is truly awesome with the bow. I think that's gonna be popular. Now there's a giant ant eater over here that I really, really like seeing. I don't, I don't see her at the moment. She's, she's usually around here. This is one of those animals we're gonna see in part two of our, uh, oh, there she is. One of, part two of our animal adventures around Animal Kingdom. As we're making our way out, you can see the African spoonbills right over there, they're feeding them, but uh, tough to uh, keep away from the Florida birds over there. And just like that, our day has come to an end. Thanks so much for sharing in it with me. It was a wild time sharing it all with you. Until next time, have a magical day.